Am I the a-hole for not babysitting my ex-husband's kid? My 30 female ex-husband, 32 male, and I have two children, 4 male, 2 female. We have been divorced just about 6 months, and he is now expecting a baby with his new girlfriend. I'm admittedly not over him. We were together 10 years, my entire adulthood. It was in this a messy split and I'm still bitter and hurt about it, while it seems to have completely moved on somehow. When we had our oldest, neither of us wanted him in daycare. No judgment, we just didn't feel comfortable. So I stayed home and eventually started my own business that allows me to work 99% remotely. My parents are also local and retired and help me out as much as they can. This arrangement works for me and I get to spend time with both of my kids. Now ex's girlfriend is 5 months pregnant and they got in a huge fight because she asked him to tour daycares and he said absolutely not. He wants her to stay home with a baby, that none of his kids are to go in daycare as admittedly the ones here do suck. He called me to vent and I listened, then he dropped a bomb. He asked if I would be willing to take care of their baby since I'm home with our two and get the help from my parents. And when I have to take the kids to the office, I can because I own it. He then mentioned that I know how he feels about his kids in one of these daycares. And I sort of lost it on him. It was a year and a half of walled up anger and hurt. And I said some nasty things that I've since apologized for. Fast forward to three days later, new girlfriend pulled me to the side when I dropped off my kids to their house and asked why I was so ugly about it and why I thought my kids were better than hers, and why her baby doesn't deserve the same things mine got. I never said that, but apologized if anything I said came off like that. Told her I'm happy for them, which I'm not, but pleasantries, but was certainly not going to babysit their kid. She's a nurse, so I get she can't work from home, and doesn't want to give up her career, but they should have thought about that. I left before it blew up again, but X called me about two hours later and asked me to come get the kids, because he and new girlfriend were fighting and he didn't want them around for it. I picked them up of course, and X texted me on a drive home and asked, again, if I would babysit for them for $200 per week. I said no, and he called me bitter, and said I'm being an a-hole because I'm hurt. I don't see it this way at all. I reiterated that the request is absurd, and I would not be talking about it anymore. This was yesterday, and all day today new girlfriend has been texting me and having her friends and family review bomb my business. I'm not worried about it. My clients know my work. Ex-husband hasn't said anything else but has been shorter with me in our conversations about our kids. So am I the a-hole for refusing to keep my ex-husband's new baby? Now for the top comments before reading the mini updates. Not the a-hole. You are never obligated to take care of someone else's child. Also, if you haven't actually provided services to her and her friends slash family, send a cease and desist letter. It can be defamation. 100% on this. It's supremely crappy for her to be entitled about the child care, but to adversely affect your income this way is criminal. This. X needs to put a stop to this, because affecting Opie's income also affects the children they share. Not a hole. I don't understand how they can possibly expect you to watch their children. This is not your responsibility. Does he know that you're still not over him? Asking because it sounds like he could be using your feelings for him to guilt you into this. Stick with a resounding no. He knows. I made a stupid mistake right after the divorce was final, right around the time he got new girlfriend pregnant. Ouch. And fell for his regret speech. We had s and I told him I didn't want this either. And maybe we could work on things. We had been having the start over conversation up until new girl found out she was pregnant and he finally told me about it two months ago. My heart is broken but logically I know we're done here. I'll get past it. You have no idea how badly I wish I could give you a hug. I'm sorry you're going through this and that is clearly using your feelings against you. Yes, you made a mistake but you were slash are in love and that makes us do stupid things still doesn't mean you deserve to be taken advantage of. You should stop letting him rant to you about his life. Just discuss the children only, nothing else. And get a cease and desist for girlfriends, friends and family for trying to ruin your business. Not a hole. And you should consult a lawyer about the review bombing. Sue them. The thought of being back in a courtroom with my ex and his new girlfriend makes me want to projectile vomit. I'm like 80% sure Google has a resolution for this. It's midnight here now, but I'll be looking at my options tomorrow. I'm more annoyed than anything.
Now for the mini updates. Thank you for all the support in the comments. I probably can't reply to all questions, but I will try to answer some as I come across them while I have some free time. A few of the repeat things have seen addressed below. It looks like Google has flagged the influx of reviews for spam, and I did call my lawyer to see what she recommends going forward. Yes, my ex was cheating with his girlfriend for some time before we divorced. I don't know how long exactly, and I don't think I want to know. I'm also a licensed professional, so going against her nursing license is a surefire way to make this worse. Lawyer will advise on how to proceed. Second and probably final update for now. Google is removing the reviews. Wackadoodle and her idiot family all have the same last name, so it was pretty easy to see the reviews weren't genuine. The ones from her friends with different names were removed too, because again, it was poorly executed at best. X has apologized for her behavior. Apparently, he is taking some time away and she thought he was with me. I have no idea where he went after he left my house Tuesday night when the kids went to bed. He certainly is not staying here. We have only spoken to confirm pickup from swim lessons today. My parents had already planned to have the kids this weekend as X has a graduation to go to and I'm going to the beach with friends. So I don't have to worry about where they're going since X is effectively homeless right now. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my ex to attend our child's birthday party? I-34 female and my ex-husband, 36 male, divorced two years ago due to irreconcilable differences. We share custody of our seven-year-old daughter, Lily, and have managed to maintain a relatively civil co-parenting relationship. However, things recently took a turn for the worse. Last week, Lily turned eight and I decided to throw her a birthday party at our home. I planned the event meticulously, inviting Lily's friends, our family members, and a few close neighbors. I wanted it to be a special day for her. However, when I sent out the invitation to my ex-husband, I specifically mentioned that he would not be able to bring his girlfriend. Now, my reasoning behind this decision is that my ex-husband has been dating someone new for the past six months, and Lily hasn't had much interaction with her. I didn't think it was appropriate to have a stranger present at her birthday party, especially since my ex-husband and I agreed to introduce new partners to Lily gradually. My ex-husband, upon receiving the invitation, immediately called me furious and demanding an explanation. He accused me of trying to exclude him from Lily's life and claimed that he had every right to be there for a special day. He argued that his girlfriend had already met Lily on a few occasions and saw no issue with her attending the party. Naturally, this turned into a heated argument with both of us standing our ground. I firmly stated that I didn't think it was fair to Lily to have a stranger present, regardless of a few brief meetings. My ex-husband insisted that he had just as much right to be there as I did and accused me of being spiteful and controlling. The argument escalated and we ended up involving our respective families, who took sides and added fuel to the fire. Some of my family members supported my decision claiming that Lily's birthday should be about her and her closest loved ones. However, my ex-husband's family argued that he should be allowed to attend and that his girlfriend was an important part of his life now and therefore she should be included. We couldn't reach a compromise and in the end, my ex-husband threatened legal action if I didn't allow him to attend a party. This left me feeling torn between wanting to make Lily happy and not wanting to escalate the situation further. Am I the a-hole for excluding my ex-husband from our daughter's birthday party? Added to answer a few questions. Lily has no opinion. Her only concern is having all of her friends there and making sure the flavor of her cake is up to her standards. As her father and I have 50-50 custody and the birthday parties during my time, I feel like I have a large say in this. Additionally, she has met the girlfriend twice. They haven't exchanged more than a few hellos and she would not be comfortable alone with her. Therefore, I do not feel that it's appropriate to invite her. My ex-husband is free to come. His girlfriend is not. Everybody sucks here. Your daughter is turning eight and she's not a toddler. She has met the girlfriend and she's old enough to understand that you and your ex are not together and you both will have other relationships. You don't get to control your ex when it comes to his personal life. He is in the right on the general topic, but he cannot demand to be a guest to your home or to the party. He can choose to come alone or not. Sounds like the two of you are at the dumb point of needing double events for everything that involves your child. When standing your ground with an ex means your child is hurt by the outcome, you're both a-holes. 
You say your daughter has no opinion, but then say she wouldn't be comfortable with her. Which is it? Comfortable alone with her. She has no opinion regarding having the girlfriend at a party, where there are probably plenty of people, but probably would feel different in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Not the a-hole. You invited him, but you are not required to have his new woman in your home. Honestly, if the OP had just been forward, I don't want your girlfriend in my house. He can either go or not. It's her legal time. He's not required to be part of it. She's not even excluding him. She's excluding the girlfriend. But she's the a-hole for trying to make it about the daughter. OP, stand your ground. But don't try to make it seem like your kid cares. You're allowed to not want people in your home. This. If you aren't comfortable hosting his new girlfriend, own it. Trying to blame it on your daughter isn't right, isn't fair, and isn't helping. You are welcome to come to Lily's party, but I am not comfortable having your new squeeze here. If you would rather have a celebration with Lily on your own, that's fine with me. Divorce is hard enough on kids, but your response is coming off very much like a control need, and it's unnecessary. My ex went through a few girlfriends before his wife, and they never missed an event. I want him happy and present. And frankly, his wife ended up being the best thing to happen to him. Your love for your child needs to be greater than your need to control. This is nonsense to react this way. Your ex is the a-hole for the court threat. Do better. Both of you. Everyone sucks here. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my father-in-law that his wife, my mother-in-law, keeps asking us for money? My 33 female and my husband Mateo, 31 male, have been married for four months, together for three years. When we were dating, his mom used to randomly call him up and ask for money anywhere from two to six thousand dollars. He told me that she had been doing it for years, but he didn't care because he had a high-paying job and had a disposable income to give her money. Now, my father-in-law is a successful businessman in his city, and I was told that they had joint accounts, so I always found it a bit odd that she asked her son for money. When we got engaged, we discussed his mom's monetary requests, and my husband agreed he would put an end to it, and he did. She stopped calling after he refused to give her money. Last Tuesday, my mother-in-law called and asked my husband for $15,000. She said she needed it for vacation. After he told her no, she sent me a lengthy text message saying that I had no right to get involved in a mother's relationship with her son. I didn't respond. I asked my husband if his parents were having money troubles, and he said that everything is fine as far as he knows. Well, today my father-in-law and sister-in-law, husband's younger sister, came over for lunch. My father-in-law was helping us choose a bottle of wine when I asked him if everything is okay at home. He looked at me confused and asked what I was talking about. That's when my husband told him about her calling us for money. It turns out that my mother-in-law has been secretly asking my husband for money in cash. My father-in-law told us that she was withdrawing cash from the bank last year and told him it was to help pay for our wedding. But she lied. She never gave us a dime. My father-in-law left immediately and hours later, my mother-in-law called crying, saying that I have a big mouth and ruined her life. My father-in-law wrote us a check to pay us back and is temporarily separated from my mother-in-law until he feels he can trust her again. My husband's maternal relatives are calling us and saying that I'm a giant a-hole. Am I the a-hole for bringing it up to my father-in-law that my mother-in-law is secretly harassing us for money? Edited to add, we were told tonight that she was using the money to buy lavish gifts for her friends and pay the rent. Not a-hole. You're not the one who has been lying and leeching for money. Hope your father-in-law divorces her. Not to mention that mother-in-law is blaming Opie for telling father-in-law about the money she was asking for, when it was actually her own son who did it. Opie just asked about money problems. Mother-in-law also blamed Opie when her son said no to giving her any money. Some mother-in-laws can't get it through their heads that their sons are the ones telling them no without any influence from the daughter-in-law. It's telling that the maternal relatives are now complaining. Chances are she was sending money to them. Not the a-hole. The other replies got this one covered. Mother-in-law is using her husband and son to liquidate funds to give a lavish lifestyle to her buddies? Your Reddit makes it even more obvious. You busted a gold digger scammer out of concern and love for your husband and his father. Oh no! You're the catalyst for someone to stop doing something they shouldn't. They faced consequences for their actions and now they're big angry. 
It's natural to feel guilty for upsetting someone and for big life changes to happen to others. But sometimes it's necessary to upset someone and change circumstances. I can be naive sometimes. But even I snorted and went, yeah, right, when I read the edit. That's a massive pile of cow poo. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my former father-in-law he can't buy compliance? My ex asked me fairly last minute to change the custody arrangements for the summer. Her father wants to take her and the kids overseas, but the days would overlap with my days. I already have plans made, including some things that have been paid for. Her father called me after I told her no and offered to pay me to change my plans. I still said no. One of the days he wanted me to see it is one of my children's birthday. I have already planned the celebration, and I want this celebration to happen. He said they will celebrate the birthday on the trip and it will be more fun for everyone. He also said I could use the money to do something cool with the kids. I still said no. My ex told the kids about the trip and some of them want to go and are upset with me. The older ones understand and are fine with the plans remaining, but I think the younger kids just can't see the big picture. I just hate disappointing them. Am I being an a-hole? Not the a-hole. Why can't ex and her father change their plans? Probably because it's last minute, which is still not Opie's problem. Not the a-hole. So she planned bad, but expects Opie to change his plans, and then told the kids about it when Opie said no, which is unacceptable. Not the a-hole. It was really crappy of your ex-father-in-law to tell the kids about the trip before having permission, so they'd be disappointed. It's also crap of your ex and father-in-law to plan a trip during your days, and during one of your kids' birthdays. They can take the trip on their days. They need to realize it's not about the money. If ex-wife and or ex-father-in-law have dual citizenship, they might actually be trying to kidnap the kids and keep them in a country that Opie can't get them back from. I'm wondering if this is their plan too. I wouldn't be letting anybody take my kids overseas or even to another state. 